everybody. Welcome to the planning committee. My name is Councillor Anita Lee, I'm the chair of the committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedures, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the table here tonight are, to my immediate right is the council solicitor, who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the council planning officers, highways engineer, and environmental health officers, who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and to make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualified petition, which we have in this case, signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. In the case of more than one petition, the time can also be given to that petitioner. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representation to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representation. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak for as long as they wish, within reason. <laughs> <laughs> However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that follows by the committee. The application <coughs> will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda will vary and this is subject to the numbers of people who uh, attend this, 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 this specific meeting. Um, so at the moment we're just looking at the one agenda item for the full group in the house. Um, the order, um, sorry. If the site visit is requested and approved by the committee this evening, then the matter will not be discussed any further tonight. The matter will be discussed at a subsequent meeting once the planning committee have visited the site um, and we'll discuss that with the, the other the differences that go on then with the, the other people that they come in. Okay, so um Matthew, can we have a presentation please? <laughs>
The building was stacked down in part a two-storey where adjacent to adjoining dwellings of the house lay. The apartment block would be L-shaped along the Millhouse Road frontage before, the, before turning back up into the site at 90 degrees. An area of amenity space is proposed within the scheme together with, with off-street car parking. The proposal has been amended with, uh, with, pre with previous proposals seeking consent for a taller building with a more dominant and extensive second floor. The eaves height of the current proposals are similar to adjacent two-storey dwellings within, with the second floor now substantially accommodated within the roof space. Normal separation distances between the proposal and adjacent existing dwellings are achieved. Landscaping and treatment to the principal elevation along the house lay would assist in softening the appearance of the building. The proposals are recommended for approval. There is a qualifying <coughs> petition of objection and all three ward councillors have objected to the proposals. Are there any observations or questions? We do, we do have a petitioner uh, a petition in relation to this but the board council has advised me that um, the petitioner doesn't want to speak on this occasion is, is that correct do all, is the petitioner here yeah. well all the petitioners are here <laughs> okay. so the lead is the lead petitioner here yeah. Yeah. And, and is that correct we want the board council to speak on your behalf yeah. right thank you okay but, but on, on that basis, the agent is not able to speak, so if the Lord Council could come forward, please. If you can just state your name, please. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Chris Blake, you all for the last week of all. Uh, Chairman, members, thank you for giving me, giving me the opportunity to address you this evening on behalf of the residents of all of us in Thank you also to those members who attended the site visit on Monday. I think the number of residents who attended the site meeting and who are here this evening demonstrates clearly the very real concern that local residents have about this absolutely inappropriate proposal. Chairman members, let me take you back to May this year. Just to give a little context, it might not be material to the decision making, but back in May on a Saturday evening, right out of the blue, local residents, or some local residents, not many, received what can only describe what, what is in effect a flyer uh, from the applicants uh, and the flyer is here this is what shut through people's doors very cheap and nasty uh, however the, the flyer said dear neighbor we propose redevelop Miller for public house site Miller Lane Hall we'll start summer 2014 completion winter 2015. I think they've forgotten the need to let the thing called Planning Commission when you put that out that, that's the presumption of this, this applicant. They have no concern for local residents. You just want to build, make a quick ball, dog out, because it's somebody else. I contacted Gallagher Pride and spoke to a Mr. A Mr. Leary, a member of well known president of all council's concerns about this. And his response, in my opinion, was less than acceptable. He told me they spoke to Willow Planners and pre discussion and the proposal met their requirements. When I spoke with planning officers, I was told that former planning officer, Matt Rushton, in a full page response, letter to the applicant, copy of which I have with me here, uh, made it clear that the proposal of three stories was not acceptable. His advice was, advice was given at the free application meeting held for a two-story development to be more appropriate and in line with the character of the area. He also talked about parking spaces, the original application had minimal target spaces, this one has more. But he also said in the letter that engagement with residents and more councillors through community consultation is considered appropriate in this instance and is encouraged. Well, members, chairman, no consultation was given to more councillors or local people at that stage. All they had was this agenda. He also talked about uh, the density. And, and his words were the density is high for a suburban location such as this, with no railway or significant shopping service provision for the easy walking distance. The density at that time in the 40 was 135 dwelling units per hectare, uh, and now it's been reduced to 30. It has reduced to 102 dwelling units per hectare, 
However, the, the area that now comes away is 44 dwellings per hectare. So you can see the density of this development. It, it, it is, you know, and, and what he said about no railway and significant shopping service, that still stands whether it's 45 or whether it's 38. That is a valid thing. And the councillors of the council on the know how desperate we are to get a rail link in that area, and everyone the council supported that. Just finishing, I won't go too long on that news letter, but this final paragraph sort of confuses me with why we're here tonight. Please buy it, be advised if an application is subsequently submitted which fails to take on board advice given by officers, then the council may refuse it without further discussion with the applicants or their agents. They have refused to take their advice, and yet we're here tonight. Why didn't the council just throw it out as they indicated to Gallagher Strive back in November 13? Anyway, that, that's just a bit of background. Following the furore that, that took off after my conversation with Mr. Leary and the, the upset of the local residents, suddenly out of the blue, Gallagher Strive decided that they would hold. A, a public presentation in the community centre of Morton uh, to try and get people on site. I was there along with my colleagues, I couldn't stay too long, I was there about 45 minutes. At that time, no one was in favour of this. Clearly the message to Gallup and Strive and their architects was, you know, hey guys, this isn't for us, you need to go away and think again. Lots of uh, reply slips were put in the box, We've never seen them again. We've told them they'll be made available to the committee, but suddenly all those reply slips have disappeared. It's just a summary relating to them. Uh, but nobody sees sight and sound of them, and I wonder why that is. It wouldn't be in favour of the applicant to share them with us. Anyway, following that meeting, a further discussion with planners, an amended application was submitted, and that's the application you're considering tonight. The application reduces the amount of units from 40 to 38, and seeks to increase parking provision to 34 spaces. Now, the development for 38 two-bed apartments, and given car usage as it is today, which we all know is heavy, then 34 spaces for 38 two-bed apartments is, is not going to be enough. You know, most homes now have two cars. Don't be kidded that over 55, as the applicant would have you believe, don't drive a car anymore, and they walk everywhere and they get buses and trains. They, they, do, they do drive. And with visitors, deliveries, etc., this will cause a lot of on street parking, particularly in the evenings and particularly at weekends. You know, and, and you know, if you're going to service a, 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 a complex like this, then 70 or 80 parking spaces may not even be enough, but certainly would be more acceptable. As we pointed out at the site meeting on Monday, there will be, the residents pointed this out as well. There will be a loss of mature trees, uh, and there are home to birds, bats, and provide a natural buffer to give adjacent properties some protection from noise and intrusion. All of this will be lost, with the car park being moved to, to that side, and cars being allowed to park right up to the, the fence line of, of properties, and, and as one resident pointed out, no doubt some cars will be nudging those fences from time to time, damage will be caused, and who will help be held responsible for that. A lot of people behind me here, and I think we have to accept that if the pub is going to be sold, then this site will be redeveloped at some stage. And, and we also recognise the need for provision of affordable housing. But surely it's not unreasonable for local residents to have a development that is proportionate and one that will fit in with the existing street scene. As I said, the amended proposal is for 38 flat complex, built to a height of three storeys. The applicants and planning officers may try to believe that it's two and a half storeys, that was said quite a lot, but Chairman, let's not kid ourselves, this is a three storey development. <coughs> Millhouse Lane and surrounding area is wholly residential, a mix of properties, bungalows, detached houses, semi detached townhouses, all built no higher than two storeys. Therefore, the proposed development would, by its size and mass, dominate the area and would not fit in with the existing street scene. And despite what the applicant says in the supporting information which we got when we were here last time, the Mill House estate is not well served by public transport. Why are we asking for a train station at the bottom of it? 
uh, you know, why, why would they have you believe, try to have you believe a limited bus service which is a uh, provision? It is exceptionally poor at weekends, no services on Sundays, and the nearest train station at Morton is, is over a mile away. <laughs> Clearly, the only 34 parking spaces, the tenants of visitors to road development would have to park their cars on Millhouse Lane <coughs> and surrounding side roads. And Millhouse Lane, we know, suffers with many traffic related road safety problems, many of which have been brought to attention in highways offices. In fact, we've had public meetings, ironically, in the Millhouse pub with road safety offices. And this estate, like many estates, now suffers on street parking issues, particularly in the evenings and weekends, and the developments, if approved, only serve to exacerbate those problems. While it's not a planning consideration, I believe it's worth noting the applicant would not be the company managing the development to approve. They are simply in this as an area to make a profit, hand over the development to a housing provider, whether that be a social landlord or a private landlord. Therefore, we have no knowledge of what the final usage would be. We believe this, that, that this application is inappropriate, is out of keeping with the existing street scene, and would, by its size and mass, be overbearing, dominant, and an overdevelopment in this residential area. We further believe it would cause major on street parking problems and would ultimately harm the immunity that local residents who live in this area could reasonably expect to, to enjoy. Clearly, the, the development is in uh, contrary to policy HS4 of the Will Immunity Development Plan. That is apparent when, when you read policy, and Chairman Members. We, I, my board colleagues, and all the people behind me who are supporting this objection, respectfully request the planning committee this evening make the right decision, a decision that protects local residents, and refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I, I was on the site visit on Monday, um, 
and on my way to another site, uh, I was in my own car, um, I travelled through the estate and I didn't see anything bigger than two storeys. If this is a fact that there's no two storeys and Councillor Blakey has put over that, that it's two storeys basically full stop, I, I would agree that it's out of concept and two storeys would be an ideal size, but I wouldn't go for a two and a half as such. Any other comments? David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. In the absence of any other comments from anybody, and I think uh, my colleague comments about the three-story development does make sense, I'd like to move a specific recommendation, Chair, if I may. The development would be unsatisfactory and undesirable having regard to its scale and massing, which would be out of scale with neighbouring development. In particular, the propelled form and rectangular bulk would result in an unacceptable visual impact, which would relate poorly to other residential properties and the domestic scale of the area, which the local planning authority and me considers would have a detrimental impact within this setting. The proposal is of an inappropriate scale and would result in a detrimental change in the character and appearance of the surrounding area. To allow the proposals would be contrary to policy HS4 of the Wirral Unitary Development Plan. I am moving refusal on those grounds and would look forward to receiving a second. Okay, so I think we've got a second one. Okay, if we can move to the vote based on that proposal, please. All those in favour of refusal?